In my previous video, I explained how to build a 970 volt boost converter for Nixie tubes based on an NE555 timer IC. In this video, I will put it to use in a Nixie tube thermal hygrometer using a DHT11 sensor, a Raspberry Pi Zero, and Python as the programming language. The thermal hygrometer is built with two IN40 Nixie tubes and one IN19A simple tube. The IN19A has the same size as the IN14s, but can show various Russian symbols, including percentage and degrees centigrade. I used commonly available parts for the driving electronics, except for the Nixie tubes, but they are pretty easy to buy online, even the IN19A types. Let's start with the schematic. This is the 9V to 180V boost power supply. It converts 9V from the adapter to 180V, which is needed for the Nixie tubes. I described it in a previous video, but I'll give you some details about it. This here is the power ground. So all connections to this ground should be as short as possible. This means that the minus of C2 and the minus of C1, R2, and also the source of the MOSFET, ideally are very close together. The other connections can be slightly longer and are less critical. Of course, be careful with it because there's 180 volt coming out of this circuit. Then here I use an LM317 to convert a 9 volt from the adapter to 5 volt, which is used for the Raspberry Pi. If you use a 9 volt adapter, the power loss is still quite low, about 0.8 watt. If you choose to use a 12 volt adapter, then the power loss becomes about 1.4 watt, so you will need a heatsink on the LM317. Also be sure to keep the LM317 away from the DHT11 sensor, otherwise you will mess up your temperature reading. Then here the 180 volt is connected to the Nixie tubes and the current limiting resistors here will limit the current to about 2 milliamps. This is 180 volt. The voltage over the Nixie tubes is about 140 volts. That means that there's 40 volts over these resistors. So the current should be about 2 milliamps, but after you switch on the circuit, Please check the voltage over the resistor to make sure that the current is not more than 2.5 milliamps, which is the maximum for the Nixie tubes. I use three watt types because if the Nixie tube shorts inside, the dissipation in the resistors will be about 2 watt. So here I use 30 pieces A42 300 volt transistors. These transistors pull down the cathode of the Nixie tube. So if this transistor Q1 is on, this Nixie tube will show a zero. The same for this one, and for this one, this is the IN19A tube, which shows the symbols. We only need to have the centigrade and the percentage symbol, but I connected all symbols. The transistors are driven via 27K base resistors, and they have a worst case uh, current amplification of 25, so that's okay for a Collector current of 4 milliamps. Here you see three Johnson counters which I use as display drivers. A Johnson counter has a clock input and 10 outputs. Every time you give a clock pulse, the next output will become high. So for instance, first Q0 is high, one clock pulse, then Q1 becomes high, one clock pulse, then Q2 becomes high, and so on. The clock input of U1 is connected to GPO17. The next Johnson counter is connected to the carry out of U1. So the carry out of this one will provide a clock pulse to the U2. So after this one reaches 10, U2 will get a clock pulse. This way, actually, these two Johnson counters can count from 0 to 99, controlled by GPIO 17 as the clock input. The last Johnson counter, U3, has its own clock input from GPIO 27. This Johnson counter is used to control the units degrees centigrade and percentage. Then there is GPIO 22, which is connected to the reset of all the 4017s. This way from the program, you have the chance to completely reset all the 4017s to zero. Then here you see all the connections of the Raspberry Pi. We already mentioned the GPIO 17 is the clock input for the numbers. The GPIO 27 is the clock input for the symbols. And then there's GPIO 22, that is used to reset all the 4017s. Then here you have 5 volt and ground, because the Raspberry Pi is directly fed by its GPIO pins. 
And then at last here you have the sensor, the DHT11. It's connected to the 3 volt 3 TPO4 for data and a ground pin, pin 9. Please notice DHT11 sensor. This is a sensor module which already has a 10K pull-up resistor. So this is the material list. In total it's 92 components. I mounted my Nixie tubes SMD style on a standard experimental board. To do this I first bent all the legs to the same length and for this I used the slider of my caliper which happened to have the right size. After you bend all the legs the Nixie tube can stand straight. So maybe you need to adjust the legs a little bit to make sure that it's standing straight. Then I cut all the legs to the same length and solder the Nixie tube on the experimental board. Then from the bottom or the top side, depending on how you make your construction, you can solder wires to the Nixie tube's legs. Here you see the pinout of the Nixie tubes, the IN14 and here the IN19A. For the IN14, the pinout was exactly like in the specification. For the IN19A, actually it was different. So I suggest that before you solder everything together, you just try with your high voltage power supply which pin is which symbol or which pin is which number. Um, the arrow on the glass, which is on the bottom of the glass, indicates where the anode is. So here you see the construction of the printed circuit boards, the Nixie tubes mounted SMD style, then here you have the uh, 170 or 180 volt boost circuit. Please make sure you get this kind of drum choke. These work the best. Then here is the 9 to 5 volt regulator circuit. The LM317 you cannot see because it's placed to the bottom, so the heat can go out on the bottom and will not affect the uh, temperature measurement. Here you have the 3 watt 20K current limiting resistors, a female header for the Raspberry Pi Zero. The Raspberry Pi is directly powered from the GPIO, so 5 volt is supplied via this female header. Then here you see three pins which go to the DHT11 te temperature sensor. So this sensor is placed as far as possible away from the heat sources. So here you see the total construction of the PCBs in the box. The Nixie tube PCB mounted to the top of the box with four screws. So the Nixie tubes are connected with wires to the control board. Here you have the DHT11 sensor, it's kept far away from all the heat sources, the LM317, the 170 volt boost and also the Raspberry Pi Zero. Here there are some buttons which are only used for debugging, so they are not useful anymore. And if you look at the back side of the whole construction, you see here the DHT sensor sticking out from the back side, so it can sense the temperature and the humidity. And here there's a 9 volt DC input connector. For the software, these are basically the functions that you will need. A function to read the DHT11. For this I use the Adafruit library, which is really very convenient. Then you need a function to change the sensor data from floating point to integer, so you can use it as a counter in a for next loop. A function to display a number from 0 to 99 at the IN14 tubes. A function to display the units percentage or degree centigrade at the IN19A tube. Then a function to soft reset the number of our units display. With a soft reset, I actually keep counting until the counter is again at zero. Still, I need a function for a hard reset of the 1417 I see from time to time to make sure that it does not count wrong. Then we need a main program loop to get and display the sensor data. And of course, we'll need to set up the Raspbian operating system to auto start the program at boot. I'm now at my Raspberry Pi to install the Adafruit library. For that you will need four steps. First start with sudo apt apt get update. Now the Adafruit library has been installed. And if you now browse to the home pi Adafruit Python folder, there's a folder with examples inside, 
And you can learn a lot from these examples because there's a lot of descriptions inside on how the library can be used to read the DHT sensor. So here you see the first part of the software, the initialization. Here you see the Adafruit DHT library. Then uh, we also import the GPIO library, of course. Then this constant speed sets the speed of the display clock, so you can play around with it later if you want. And here we go for the GPIO setup. So GPIO 17 is set as an output. It's used for the number of the display clock. GPIO 27 is also set as an output for the unit display clock. And GPIO 22 is the third output, and we use that only for the 4017 reset. So this is the second part of the software. These are the functions. The first function is display number. It's used to display a number between 0 and 99. If number is, for instance, 27, it will go through this loop 27 times and increment the two 1417s connected to the IN14s by 27. It will do this by making GPIO 17 high, then wait for a very short period, and then make it low again, and then wait for a very short period again. As you see, with the number speed, you can set the speed of this display loop. Then after it's finished, it will stay for there for 8 seconds. So for instance, if number is 27, it will count very quickly to 27, then stay at 27 for 8 seconds. The next function is the reset of the number display. It basically does the same. So if number was 27, this one will count until 100 minus 27. That means it will keep counting until the, the counter reaches 100 and is in an overflow. That means this function actually is a soft reset of the number display. But you can see the numbers rolling, so this will give a very nice effect. Then the next one is the same, but it has only a single uh, tube. It's the IN19A tube. So this one will count until unit number. So here you can set it will count, for instance, until 4, if degree centigrade is at 4 of this tube, and it will count to 7 if the percentage is at 7. So this way you can set the unit. Then here you have reset 1417. That's a very simple function. It will just make the GPIO 22 high for a short period to reset the 4017. So this is the third and last part of the software. It's the main loop. It's not an infinite loop, it will only repeat the loop for 1 million times, that means that after 15 years, your clock will stop and you will need to unplug it and plug it back in to reset it. It will first read the temperature and the humidity from the DHT sensor using the Adafruit function. Then it will print the temperature and humidity if you run it in a terminal. Then the humidity and temperature reading is changed into an integer to make it suitable for loops. The 1417 is reset one times, then the program enters a nested loop of five times. It will first set the units to three, so the IN19A tube will display percentage. Then it will display the humidity on the IN14 tubes with the display number function. It will do a soft reset of the IN14 tubes, and then it will do a set unit 7. 3 plus 7 is 10, so this is actually a soft reset of the units tube. Then it set units to 4, which means it will display the degree centigrade on the units tube. It will display the temperature on the number tubes, and it will do a soft reset of the number tubes, and again set unit 6. 4 plus 6 is 10, that means that the IN19 tube will be reset to 0 as well, so it's a soft reset. So it will do this for 5 times, and will not get a new reading during these 5 times from the DST sensor. After it exits the nested loop, it will display the humidity for one more time, so during the time that you actually do this reading of the temperature, which can take quite some time, uh, the humidity is displayed. I think there's a nicer way to solve that. If you have a better way, please let me know and put it in the comments. That was the end of the software. Now we only need to find a way to automatically start this program.
When you finish your program, you can manually start it from the directory where you saved it. I save my program in the examples directory of the Adafruit library. The program is called dht11.py. So I open a terminal in that directory and type sudo python dht11.py. There you have your first reading, so the program is running now. Now we want to automatically start this program at boot up of the Raspberry Pi. To do that, we have to save it in rc.local. So let's first stop the program with Ctrl C. And then we edit the rc.local with the following command sudo nano forward slash etc rc.local so this is the rc.local file I go to the end of the file and just before the exit is zero I enter the start command for the Python program which is sudo python and then of course I want to have the full path to the program And then the Python program was dht11.py. And after this, add an ampersand to make sure that the Raspberry Pi will continue its boot process after it found this line. Otherwise, it will stop here and maybe not boot at all. Now we save the rc.local with Ctrl X, yes, enter. Now, next time you start your Raspberry Pi, the Python program will start automatically, but it will not open a terminal window, so you will not be able to see the program running. If you want to stop the program, you will have to stop it by editing the rc.local again. So now let's restart the Raspberry Pi and see what it looks like when the clock is starting. So now I switch on the thermohygrometer. The first numbers that appear are 00 and a symbol M, which is the first symbol in the IN19A. So now the Raspberry Pi is booting up, and that may take quite some time. So now the Raspberry Pi has started, and the program also has started. 59% humidity and 28 degrees centigrade. Altogether, it was a really nice project. I learned how to program Python. It was my first Python program, so for sure there's some opportunities there to improve it. I also think that using a Raspberry Pi might be a bit overkill for this kind of application. Maybe a small Arduino board would have been better. If you have any suggestions or if you liked the video, please leave a comment. I hope you liked it and see you in the next video.